the RBI had always expressed a reservation when it came to optionality contracts in the nature of debt-like instruments, which either guaranteed an assured return or a fixed price IRR to the foreign investor. This position changed in, in 2014 when optionality in contracts, very much along the lines of put and call options, were allowed by the RBI. However, there were conditionalities which were placed um, on such option contracts, and one of which was um, that the pricing would have to comply with the fair market value. Therefore, it underlined the fact that, again, no assured returns could be given. Despite the clarity which has been brought about by the RBI, we have seen various instances where taking shelter behind the RBI's rules with regard to assured returns, promoters have actually uh, tried to renege from the agreement that they have signed up in the context of arbitral awards for enforcement of put options. We have seen many instances where the promoters in India are actually resisting the award on the ground of public policy. So two very interesting judgments have come out of the Delhi High Court. Uh, one which is Cruise City versus Unitec and the other one, of course, is the very well-known Tata Docomo case. In Cruise City, the Delhi High Court held that the promoter cannot take cover behind uh, the RBI's rules with regard to assured returns. Even though the promoter brings up the argument of public policy citing FEMA and the lack of ability to guarantee an assured return, a strict construal of public policy would not mean that every instance of a breach of Indian law would actually be covered by this fact. In the context of the NTT Do Docomo case, the Delhi High Court held that because the award was in the nature of damages and not the right to enforce the put option to actually give an assured return, no permission of the RBI would be needed. Now, one other point to note in relation to the Docomo case was that the RBI actually tried to file an intervention application to be heard in relation to whether such a put option contract should be enforced or not. The Delhi High Court held that when the parties had agreed to settle and the award had already come to that conclusion that there was no scenario in which special permission of the RBI had to be sought to enforce the put option contract, the intervention by the RBI would itself not be allowed. In the context of the Cruise City case, it however did leave the room open with regard to payment of the funds from India, where it did specifically state that permission of the RBI would be needed or due process would have to be followed in order to remit the funds from India. So this is a very interesting trend that we are seeing in the context of put and call options, uh, where the courts in India are making a note of the fact that the promoter who has entered into the contract has done so knowing fully well what the regulatory regime in India is and therefore cannot take cover under the ground of public policy to renege from the agreement. But one is not clear that when it comes down to the final leg of being able to remit the funds from India, what are the challenges that the RBI could put up or what are the impediments which the foreign investor would have at the end of the day? Some of the fallback measures that the foreign investors could potentially look at would be uh, things like obtaining a guarantee from some of the promoters who are not based in India or taking a security on assets which are not in India or looking at structures where the money does not need to leave India at all. These would certainly go a long way in being able to, uh, to give effect to the contract and the award which the foreign investor would have obtained. <laughs>